Hey guys, welcome back to The Curly Reader. My name's Amanda, and today we're gonna talk about some middle grade graphic novels. Okay, so I historically have loved reading middle grade graphic novels, and I have not read very many this year at all. Um, so I decided to remedy that. I kind of got a bee in my bonnet the other day while I was sitting at the library with my kids and they were picking out books. And I started perusing the middle grade graphic novel section and decided I was going to start reading some of them. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine graphic novels here um, that I decided I was going to make a goal and I'm just going to read one a day and knock them all out. And so I figured I would show you what I am going to be reading. I don't know what order I'm going to read them in. Some of these I don't really know what they're about. We'll just kind of have to figure it out along the way. Um, but the first one is Invisible by Christina Diaz Gonzalez and Gabriella Epstein. Um, I have barely started this one, um, so I got that one. Um, the other day when we were at our independent bookstore, um, an independent bookstore close to us, uh, I picked this one up for my daughter. It's called Twin Cities because we live near the Twin Cities. This is not about Minneapolis and St. Paul, but whatever. It's by Jose Pimienta. Um, so I grabbed that one. I have the second in the Nightfall series. Um, this is Shadow of the Bird by Tim Probert. Um, this is, like I said, the second in this series. I have The Legend of Auntie Po. This is by Xing Ying Kor. I have Miss Quincess by Kat Fajardo. Miss Quincess by Kat Fajardo. That looks so cute. Sorry about the glare. And you can probably hear my husband is outside mowing the lawn. Um, I have Borders by Thomas King and Natasha Donovan, which looked really good. Pause. Gabby Gets It Together. This is the first in a series, I believe, by Michelle Asarasakorn. Asarasakorn? Ooh, man. I don't know if I said that right. And Nathan Fairbairn. Fairbairn? I don't know. Anyway. Um, Stargazing by Jen Wang. And Just Pretend by Tori Sharp. So, yeah. Like I said. I have a lot of them here and the game plan is to read one a day for the next nine days. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, so the first one that I'm gonna read as this kind of project in this project is Invisible by Christina Diaz Gonzalez and Gabriella Epstein. Um, I picked this one up, I put it on hold at the library. I think it was on my most anticipated releases for the year um, and so yeah. I'm going to get into it and kind of see how the story goes. Hello. All right. So I have fin finished now Invisible. Um, this ended up being really good. It was about these five kids who all speak Spanish. That's the only thing they really all have in common. And really all we know going into it is they're all in the principal's office. They don't know why they're there, but the principal wants them to explain a situation that happened involving all of them. And so you know they were all involved in something together. And so it goes through the book kind of in five segments. You get one segment from each of the kids as they pass off narration from one person to the other. And you get kind of this story about these kids who are all kind of forced to be, it's kind of like a breakfast club scenario, um, to be together and some things go down and kind of what happens. Um, like I said, the only thing that you know ahead of time that these kids have in common is that they all speak Spanish. The thing that I liked about this book is that it really showed that just because you share a language with somebody doesn't mean that you're the same. It doesn't mean you have really have anything else in common. Um, but also that just because you find yourself really different from everybody, you can still find commonalities between yourself and other people. And so it was really, really interesting. Not interesting. It was really fun to read and engaging. Um, the one thing that I did really like about it, I'm trying to find a good page to kind of show. Um, but like, for example, on this page, um, you'll see the text bubbles and then you have like a dotted bubble outside of it and it shows 
it's in Spanish because the characters are speaking Spanish, but then it has the English translation next to it. So it has the English and the Spanish both in the text, which I love. Um, and so I thought that that was really interesting just to kind of show how it's hard for people who maybe English isn't their first language to be in a school where the teachers and the administration don't really understand what they're saying, things like that. So, um, yeah, I gave this one four stars, would highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. So next I'm going to pick up for my stack, Miss Quincess by Kat Fajar Fajardo. Um, and this one I believe has something to do with a quinceanera. Um, but other than that, I really don't know, but we're going to get into it. I'm going to sit out here on my deck and read for a little while. Um, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous summer night out here. And so we are going to sit out here and read for a little bit and I'll let you know when I finish it. Well, I finished Miss Quinces, which I feel kind of dumb now because I kept saying it was Miss Quinces. No, it's Miss Quinces, uh, like quinceanera. So this is all about a girl who goes to Honduras with her family for her summer vacation and kind of gets a quinceanera um, forced on her, which is like a big party that uh, a lot of Latina girls have when they're 15 years old so when they turn 15 so the main character in this is 15 but it really read like something that a 10 or 11 year old would read or and the I don't know I the main character acted like she was like 11 or 12 not 15 and so it was kind of weird and the illustrations were pretty basic I'm trying to find a specific like example of something um but the words were really, really big, things like that. And so uh, on pages where, sorry for the shaky camera, on pages where it's like Spanish and English was being spoken, the English would be in black and the Spanish would be in blue. Um, and it's all in English, but for the most part, there's a few Spanish words in there, but for the most part, it's all English. Um, but they kind of denoted that they were speaking a different language by it being in blue. And so that was different. But Overall, this was not my favorite just because I feel like the story was for 10, 11 year olds about a 15 year old, but the 15 year old didn't act like a 15 year old. It was just kind of weird. So I, I really enjoyed the getting to learn about quinceaneras, um, getting to learn about her visiting her family in Honduras and that sort of stuff I thought was really, really cool. And I wish that there were more books out there about things like that, but the age discrepancy on things was just a little weird. So um, that's where I landed with that one. So next I am going to go off of the contemporary route and go fantasy and start Lightfall and I will let you know what I think of this when I finish. Hello friends. All right, I finished Lightfall. Um, this is the second book in the Lightfall series. This one is Shadow of the Bird. The first one is The Girl and the Galdurian, I believe. Um, and this one was fine. It's a fantasy middle grade graphic novel series um, that follows B, who is trying to find her gramps. And there's these like lights that light up different areas of the world and they're starting to go out and she's trying to find her gramps and figure out why the lights are going out. This one was not as good as the first one for me, um, but I still really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to finishing this series. Um, I will continue reading these. So this I felt like was a solid second book in the series. So finish that one up. So I'm going to pick another book from the stack. And the one that I'm going to read next is The Legend of Auntie Po. This is by Xingying Kor. Um, and I don't really know much about this one other than it has to do with like um, uh, Babe, the Big Blue Ox uh, and Chinese folklore. So other than that, I don't really, oh, a giant blue water buffalo, not Babe, the Big Blue Ox. Um, but 
something about Chinese folklore and maybe like Paul Bunyan-esque. I don't really know, but we'll figure it out. This is also the longest one that I have to read, so I figured I would try to knock this one out tonight and hopefully get back with you tomorrow and pick another one tomorrow. So I'm going to get going with this one. Hello. All right. So I have finished The Legend of Auntie Poe. I really, really like this one, guys. This is about a Chinese American girl and her father who work in a logging camp in the 1880s, I think, out in the Sierra Nevadas. And it just kind of goes through the discrimination and the different way of life that some of these Chinese workers we're living, living in the logging camps. It also gets into just logging camps in general. Some of the um, details of the day-to-day -day life and the tools they used and the processes and all of that. It was really good. This um, girl, May, she starts seeing or making up these tall tales, kind of like Paul Bunyan, but it's Auntie Poe and her um, water buffalo, her giant water buffalo, Pepe. I think is the water buffalo's name and so it's kind of like Paul Bunyan and the big blue o babe the big blue ox but this is Auntie Poe and Pepe and they help the loggers and all that and I absolutely loved it um, like I said it gets into a lot of the cultural things going on in the camps and that sort of thing and so yeah four and a half stars thoroughly enjoyed really really recommend picking this one up um, and then next I am going to go ahead and pick up Just Pretend. This is by Tori Sharp. This is a contemporary book and so we're going to try to knock this one out next and see what I think. All right, so I have hit a wall, and so I am going to pause this one and not read it right now because I don't want to read myself into a rut, and I'm just going to set this one down. I will probably pick this one up again in the future. It wasn't bad by any means. I just am kind of getting out of the mood for graphic novels, um, but I did read four, so The Legend of Antipo, Invisible... Uh, Miss Quinces, and then um, Lightfall Book 2, which I already had to take back to the library because it was overdue. Um, and so I read four and pretty much enjoyed all of them. There are pros and cons to each of them. Um, but yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this kind of vlogish style of a wrap-up. Um, and I hope that this kind of piqued your interest into some middle grade graphic novels. What, some, what are some of your favorite middle grade graphic novels that you've read recently, let me know that down below in the comments. And other than that, that's going to do it for today. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And until next time, see ya. Mm -hmm.